What's going on, everybody? My name is Elvin, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Today, we're checking out another SCP video. It is by SCP Explained. This is SCP-001, The Real Adventures in Capitalism. And as an American, I do love capitalism <laughs> and democracy. So I'm not truly sure what I'm really getting into this, but by the thumbnail, it seems like some sort of guy writing writing and deer so i'm not entirely sure what, what this is going to be about so i'm just going to go ahead and get right into it in three two one boom also i'm going to be yawning because i made a show a little real adventures in capitalism midnight. no you haven't even if you think you have you haven't it's okay we remember it too but as far as the SCP Foundation has been able to determine, the show never actually aired. According to its official Foundation file, The Real Adventures in Capitalism is a mimetic condition which consists of spontaneously occurring false memories of the aforementioned show. According to information gathered oh, from various right affected the individuals, The Real Adventures in Capitalism began airing in late 2013 and stopped in spring of 2018, and consists of two 13-episode seasons. All persons and events depicted in The Real Adventures in Capitalism are believed to be fictitious. Just in case you haven't been affected by this mimetic condition or only recall certain portions, then this video will serve as a comprehensive look at the entirety of The Real Adventures in Capitalism, I'm very tired. a show it's that, I must day. emphasize, does not exist. We begin with Season 1, Episode 1, The Boss Lady. The episode depicted Dr. Isabel Helga Anastasia Parvati Wondertainment V, PhD, sitting dejected in an office okay. chair. Emma, her new assistant, entered the equation, much to Isabel's initial disappointment. She was used to corgis named Jeremy and lots of ice cream, not boring business talk. But after learning that she and Emma might have more in common than she first thought, Isabel's mood began to improve. Season 1, Episode 2, Ticker Tape Tango was a classic black and white rubber hose animation. It included a big band musical number, though no one interviewed by the foundation could recount the exact melody or lyrics to the song. The executive board made an appearance, depicted with hissing voices, ticker tape mouths, and an obsession with all things corporate. Classic slapstick comedy and absurdity ensued. In season <laughs> one, episode three, Isabel becomes president. Well, you can extrapolate from the title what happened. Isabel became president, with Emma as her vice president, and Jeremy the Corgi as Secretary of State. During her tenure, she replaced the nuclear arsenal with jelly beans, helped cats and dogs live in peace. She turned debt into donuts, and abolished any political parties that did not involve dancing. However, it was revealed that Isabel was elected by mistake, and she was removed from the position. Season 1, Episode 6, entitled Cryogenic Chaos, featured just that. Do we just the story skip it was episode? filled with roving dinosaurs, various big feet, and red-robed prehistoric cultists. Fun fact, some of the dinosaurs depicted in this episode, which never existed, had feathers. In Season 1, Episode 8, three corgis, all named Jeremy, okay, yeah, attempted to episodes. rescue Isabel from a board meeting. However, being small dogs with no opposable thumbs, they were unable to accomplish their mission. <laughs> Season 1, Episode 10 followed three men. Edwin, Theodore, and Reginald. Edwin cared only for money, Theodore for adventure. Reginald dared to dream big and work hard. While Edwin stayed in London and Theodore ventured out into the world, Reginald traveled to the Chicago and Hold stayed on. in London and Theodore ventured Why out- Why does Theodore look like Joe from Last of Us? Am I the only one that sees that reference or is it just me? Out into the world, Reginald traveled to the Chicago World's Fair to showcase his toys. He received a job offer there from the Anderson Factory, who were oh looking boy, for a not a to design not Anderson. their toys. Season 1, Episode 11 was okay, called... So if you know anything about the Wondertainment series or Anderson, you know exactly where this is going. I've seen those videos. I reacted to the Wondertainment video. Um, I didn't react to the Anderson one because I had already watched it long ago. It's all somehow i don't know why it just seems like it's all connected and i don't truly know why the terrible tale of mr red <laughs> mr red was pale as a ghost except for his more tired than i thought and his red red hands he killed guards workers misters misses businessmen and more he made his way to isabel's office she cried as he jumped at her emma jumped between them battling mr red he collapsed in defeat and found Mr. Hungry waiting. Season 1, Episode 12 was only made of sounds. Teeth grinding, flesh tearing, a swallow, a whisper, 
It is very hungry. Episode 13 told the tale of a dreadful factory built by wicked hands that fed on flesh. Season 2 the Anderson Factory was titled Road Trip. It began with a bright purple convertible speeding down the highway somewhere unknown, somewhere alien. Emma drove, wearing a bandana and sunglasses with a pair of uncharacteristic jeans. In the passenger seat, Isabel us? sat with Jeremy on her lap. Emma flipped through the radio stations until she gave up. It's not gonna stop hurting. I'm sorry, Isabel. Episode 2 began with hideous, horrid swine creatures at the windows of a diner. Emma built barricades as Isabel hid under the counter. Then Isabel began to draw a battle plan in ketchup and mustard, designing a counterattack. The swine things were toast thanks to her direction. Season okay. 2, Episode 3, Red Planet Blues, was a funeral on Mars. Looks like she's just no guests were invited, but two showed up anyway, Emma and Isabel. They sent the space rover Opportunity off to her resting place together. She could no longer call home, but she went there just the same. In Episode 4, <laughs> Season 2, a man in a red turban and black bathrobe, SD, ran into Isabel and Emma just as he had many times before. A comet fell to Earth. A deer climbed from its ruins. SD challenged it and was vaporized into a metallic fog. Episode 5 saw a hard time in the House of the South with SCP-1483, aka the Third Antarctic Empire and the Empress of Antarctica. In Episode what? 6, the world Hold was on a in second. disarray. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was focused on the cat and then I heard that and I was like, what the hell did I just hear? And are you good over there, or are you just laying down there? Holy shit! I can't stop yawning! <laughs> Uh, I'm definitely gonna fall asleep tonight. Across the highway, Emma was buried beneath a tide of rotting entities, much like SCP-106. And Isabel, Jeremy, and her arms caught between worlds. Episode uh -oh. seven was a throwback, a throw way back. It was the beginning of time. Everything bathed in darkness. Then yeah, came three brothers down. and a tree. The cosmos followed. The gods above and below, of light and dark, and then. Emma Azalthier Brown. Nobody important. Emma woke in a landfill many, many years later to the sight of three trash gods with magpie heads. They searched for a buyer for this nobody, and their search took them down into the court of the Scarlet King. Oh. In episode 8, Hello. Isabel was lost and alone. She wandered through the worlds, only Jeremy for comfort. Then she was found. She was pursued by those who would want to capture her, to sell her. When she stopped running, she is in the mountains. There is snow, and it is so, so cold. With nothing else to do, she curls up there and cries. Episode 9 was another flashback. The tale of Reginald... Right, I know this is a random detail to bring up, but I remember something being said in, in the Scarlet King video about two tr time travelers, and I think it was them. I'm not going to say it this neat, because I know I'm going to get it very wrong, and I don't want anybody coming after me. Because I do not remember. It's been too long since I've watched that Scarlet King video. So I don't want to kind of cross that threshold. Old Questing House. He took a job at the Anderson factory. Didn't get it wrong. And at first it had been a dream. But the dream soon turned to a nightmare. And he oh, worked God. until his fingers bled. Yeah. But he broke. If you know anything about the Anderson factory, you know where the hell this is going. Look free. He ran away and changed his name. It was a fresh start with the toy factory he had always wanted, but still he dreamed of an heir. Reginald crafted a son, but the boy came out wrong, cruel. He tried again, making a daughter, but she was wrong too. She had joy and wonder, but was naive, head firmly planted in the clouds. So he hid himself from her until he passed away from this world. Episode 10 began with an old man and a wolf trudging through the snow. He wakes Isabel from her sleep and leads her to a cave up in the mountainside. Through the cave, he promises a way home. She walks inside and it's dark, empty. But then, voices, a song. Isabel speaks and whispers, I raised up my hand and there was fire and there was. A fire bloomed, filling the cave with light. She learned the secrets of the Wonder Maker and the Firebringer and creation itself. She knew then she would be able to save her friend. Episode <laughs> 11 was titled In the Court of the Scarlet King. It began in the deepest point of the abyss, in the pits of darkness the beneath King's the black domain. iron sun, belching smoke and slime. The water was thick, turned to sludge from oil and flesh. The air was filled with agonized screams 
And there, at the heart of it all, was Emma, bound in chains, beaten and bruised. She was thrown into a cell and left alone inside. All seemed hopeless, but then, she snapped her chains as if they were nothing but threads. She stood, stretched, and wiped the blood from her nose. She spat out a tooth. Then she pressed her hands into the wall and shattered the palace, throwing herself out of it. She did not rush to freedom, but to the throne room of the Scarlet King himself. Those that remembered the episode recall the ensuing battle as spectacular. Bones vaporized, heads bashed in, blood painted the walls, and brimstone splintered across the screen. Emma battled dukes, demons, leviathans, and packed a nuclear fusion punch. The king watched the battle unfold and gripped his lance tight. As Emma tore a leviathan in two, she rushed toward the throne. No, not the throne. Toward the brides of the Scarlet King lying on the floor and pierced with spears. She approached the smallest bride, the seventh, and reached for the spear. She grabbed hold of it and pulled with all the strength in her body. With a great cry of effort, the spear was pulled from her body. The seventh bride was free. The spear fell to the ground, shaking it with the impact of its fall. At this provocation, <laughs> the king stood. Emma called out to the bride, urging her to go to seize her freedom. The seventh bride stood on unsteady feet. With one hand, she grabbed at the wound in her stomach, and with the other, she picked up the very spear that had wounded her so. She formed a sign of waymaking and vanished from the court. Emma <laughs> dove toward the king, screaming at the top of her lungs. But the king was far stronger than her, and he swatted her away like a troublesome insect. She skipped across the floor like a stone across a pond. She struggled to her feet as the Scarlet King advanced toward her, a spear in his hand. The screen faded to black, cut to the Seventh Bride. With her ancient magics, she spirited SCP-231-7 away from her hellish life. <laughs> she took her to a quiet place where peace reigned for one moment. The seal was broken then, a fire rising up above Montauk Point. The center could not hold, Montauk. and there was a great and terrible noise. Episode 12 was the dawn of the final day. As the final day began, a man in a torn lab coat stood on a cliff by the sea, holding a leather-bound book. No, not leather. Human skin. He cried out to the sea, face and arms dripping with blood. The Davites were coming. They are eating history. The walls of Uruk crumble. Harappa is devoured by demons. Ramses' lives vivisected open atop the Great Pyramid. Cyrus is paraded through the streets atop an iron spike. Athens meets a relativistic kill vehicle. Quin Shi Huang is flayed, and still he screams. Jerusalem is swallowed by a pit of cinders. Rome chokes on chlorine gas. Byzantium drowns in blood. Charlemagne is crucified in the Palatine Chapel. William's men hang him from the mast with his own spine. The Great Khan strangles his sons in their tents and runs out into the steppe alone. Baghdad is buried in the ashes of its citizens. Oh God, Joan, what have they done to you? Moctezuma is fed molten gold before all his people. The Mughals cannot stop the tide of flesh from the sea. The siege of the new world is ahead of schedule. The reign of terror enthrones a hanged king. In Flanders' fields, the tumor mesticizes. The Sarkists feed the Tsar to his people. The Germans walk out into the fields and forests to lay down. Stalin starves himself in his own gulags. The Americans build themselves a great and hateful engine and throw their children before Moloch reborn forever. The veil tears okay, not apart. Moloch. They are here. They are now. They are upon us. And then the world burned, crumbling to pieces. From deep within the library of Yggdrasil Nahash, the serpent emerged. Hakama, the once broken and now whole goddess, joined him, and together they watched it all come <laughs> crashing down. The Scarlet King rose up from the pit, together with his leviathans and his demon lords. The gods were at war now, descending from the heavens uh -oh. and rising from the depths below. The three brothers in black robes rode their white steeds, leading Wait, an army Who are of the these risen guys? dead. The library burned. The two sons of Adams met to battle once again for one more time. Nahash was torn asunder, and his sister was broken all over again. And then, it was all over. Darkness, true and complete. The dead crumbled to dust, and the stars blinked out one by one. No light anywhere in creation, except for one. Thirty-six saints gathered on the mountaintop to fulfill their destinies together. They would break the seal of the Scarlet King. There was no other option. Meanwhile, 
he was taking his new throne. The 13th episode of season two, the closing episode of the show that does not exist, was the end of the world goes like this. It began with the dark and starless mists and a man there wearing the robes of the 36, weeping, praying. He cried out to the only source of hope left in the universe. From the mist stepped Ahibat, once the seventh bride. By her side, Grace, the freed girl. The Empress followed, then Harker the Fist, then finally, Esti, riding upon the deer. His body was different, but he huh. was the same. Little reunion of fools we've got here, he remarked. Fools we are, but we are the fool's fools, said Ahabat. She tapped her spear against the ground, breaking it into seven pieces. Esti took his piece first, then Set touched each one, leaving them glowing white. The Empress took hers, singing an old song about Antarctica. Each of the others took their piece in turn. Down in the abyss, Emma was lying on the ground, still. But then a pair of red sneakers walked toward her. Emma's eyes her friend. Opened. Isabel reached for her, lifting Emma up into her arms, having her friend onto her shoulder. Ah, she waved yep. to the audience, breaking the fourth wall. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. She joined the others, the warriors sharing the spear, and settled Emma onto the ground. She thanked her for all that she had done. Then she snapped her fingers, and a fire ignited. She took the seventh spear and began to sing the oldest song. The stars turned back on one at a time. A fireball, shaped like a corgi, jumped from her shoulder running around her feet. <laughs> Everyone was ready to go. There was no more waiting around. Isabel waved her hand and the mist parted. There before them was the throne and the king upon it. He had eaten his servants, and so there was no one left but him and the warriors come to slay him. He attacked the seventh bride, but she freed herself. The warriors yeah. descended all at once, moving with the push and the pull to and fro, as if in a dance. Then the killing blows. First to the king's right eye, then his left, his liver, his stomach, his right arm, his heart. Only Isabel remains. Emma smiles in approval, her first smile. Emma turns to Ash, lending her oh. fleeting bits of strength, and Isabel pieces the Scarlet King's skull. The all-death approached, and Isabel held out her hand, offering a dance. Creation and destruction together as one. The screen faded to black, and Isabel spoke. The end of the world goes like this. Everyone lived happily ever after. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that was just a hodgepodge of anomalous episodes that never aired and it just kind of threw me for loop because i wasn't really sure what i was watching or how the hell do i keep track of all of it which i really wasn't able to um you good all right well i'm going to just end this here taz is going to do her own thing because I'm not really sure what really to say about this, as it was just purely confusing to me. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's reaction video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next reaction video. Bye!